Good afternoon, brethren. Such a nice Sabbath to be here. It was a pretty good week, except we still had a lot of rain during the week. Uh, but it's like it's come to a close. The rain I'm talking about, well, uh, as we know, it's kind of cool for this time of the year, but we can all enjoy it because pretty soon you're going to say, boy, I wish we had some of them cool days we had the first of May. Years ago, we was on a cruise, and the two couples that sat on our table was, well, at that time, they were elderly people. We were younger people at that time. And they were from Elkins, West Virginia. And Tom going up there, I talked to Tom the other day about him going up there. I worked at Union Carbide, it was four years, I was a pipe superintendent. Well, the job closed down, so of course, they told me I had to go. Well, I had to go, that's the way of life, you know. So, my boss told me to we'll go to the pay mass. It was an early Thursday morning. He said, go ahead, pick up your final paycheck. And what I did, I went to see Bob Davis, and uh, I had accumulated a lot of time, because I never, I never got paid for overtime. But when I sat down, we talked, he said, we told me if I needed a job, they had some job openings in the least Mississippi if I wanted to go. He would recommend me to be, to be transferred over there. And so he said, well, I have your paychecks. He said, I didn't give them to you all at one time because the federal government would have hit you hard. So he said, I gave them to like a weekly salary. So he counted one, he counted two, he counted three, he counted four, he counted five. And he said, you got another one coming because your time don't end until 5.15 today, so next week I'll have one in the mail. But I looked at him, I said, boy, that's a nice little pocket change here. So when I got home, I said, mama, we talked about going to West Virginia, going up the Blue Ridge Parkway, going to Dollywood, going to uh, Pigeon Forge. And I said, what do you think? She asked, she said, well, I'm ready, you know. And that was right before Thanksgiving week. So we packed up my son, my daughter, and my son's daughter, Nicole. We left early Sunday morning, and that evening we made it to Franklin, North Carolina, right on the gateway of going up to the Blue Ridge Parkway. Well, we had a good trip. Went up with Blue Ridge Parkway. I mean, it's a beautiful country. And at that time of the year, it was real nice and cool. It was 42 degrees, but when you got out of the car, it was no breeze, so you didn't really feel like it was really cold. It was nice. So we went to the, up to the, the mountains there, the trail going up to the mountain, the Blue Ridge Parkway. And every now and then, they have a stop where you could pull over for a scenic route you could see down here and there. So we stopped at the first one, we pulled in. And we're there a few minutes when one of the rangers pulled up. And he said, he took, glad that we had showed up and nice to be there. And he said, now he said, if you look over there, you go way off, he said, you can see little orange dots. He says, you can see they're moving. I said, he says, deer hunters. I said, oh, it's deer hunters, well, you can see them moving. We went too long with Mark and Dawn, went to another trail, they went down the trail, and somebody had killed a deer at a, at a stream. And they skinned the deer, but they only took the hind quarters. They left the rest there. So they came, they came back to us, of course, and we went up to Blue Ridge Parkway and we came back down. The last week, uh, last night, uh, it was a Wednesday night, the day before Thanksgiving, and we pulled into the roadway in to stay the night. And they had a, a, a Thanksgiving buffet at the Holiday Inn the next day. I said, well, I know we're gonna eat lunch the next day. We're gonna eat at the Holiday Inn. So, of course, we wind up, got up next morning, we planned on going to the Hollywood Holiday Inn. We ate our, our buffet, and, and uh, we headed back home. We got home at Saturday, Sunday evening about 7 o'clock, and they said there was a blizzard coming through that area. And sure enough, boy, it was cold and snowed, so we got out just in time. Well, it was one beautiful trip. Now, if you need a name for my sermon today, it will be my father and I are one. But first, let's start with my physical father. The Bible says the normal span should be three score and ten. Well, my father died early at 73 years. He was a real hard worker. I mean, I mean, he worked at, at, at when he was, uh, his father died when he was only 12 years old. And 
actually he had to go to work because there wasn't no welfare, no social security, and there wasn't no food stamp. If you didn't work, you didn't eat. So they had seven children in the family, and they had two girls and five boys. So uh, he had to go to the sawmill when he remember him saying, leave his little bucket early in the morning. He, he didn't go to school. He couldn't, he couldn't go to school. He didn't have uh, for him to go to school. Well, he, f he worked at a shell oil company for 30 years. He became a pipe fitter. But one thing I mentioned about my father, and maybe it helped us in the long run, he never mentioned nothing about Jesus Christ, nothing about God, never mentioned nothing about prayer, never saw him pray, never went to church, never went to church. But he was a hardworking man, and he had some good ideas, because he always told us, boy, if you're going to start a job, if you go do something, if you don't plan on doing it right, don't even start. I don't want to even get you start. And he said, if somebody wanted to show you something that you've never done before, he said, learn it, boy, because you never can tell down the road when you need it. And that's a true fact of life. You don't have to go to school to learn that. Like I say, he was a hard worker. Now, my mother, on the other side, she, she didn't go to church either, but she read a Bible often. She had a Bible in the living room, and she, she'd take a Bible out, and at night sometime when you go to bed, she'd read the, the Bible by lamplight. And she was just fussed at me one time. I went up there on a good Friday. I was in the church and everything. And she said, what are you doing today, son? I said, well, I'm getting ready to bring the plow to spring God. She said, you know, you're not supposed to dig in the ground today. If you dig in the ground, you're going to see blood. I said, well, Mama, is that so? She said, yeah, you know. I said, well, I've been digging all morning. I haven't seen blood. <laughs> well, enough said about my family. And my father and I, one, he said, it's in John uh, 10, 30. Jesus realized at a very early age, whatever he did had to come through his father. That's where all his strength was. And that's the only way he could cook. He had to stay close to the father. Time and time again, he admitted of himself he could do nothing. It was the father in him who did the work. He always stayed in constant contact, constant prayer with the father, uneven to death. What a perfect father-son relationship this was. Turn in your Bible to Luke 240, please. Here in 240, it says, the, the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. And then when he was 12 years old, he went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when he had fulfilled the days and he returned, the child tired behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph, his brother, didn't know that he was left behind. But it's supposing him to be in the company when a day's journey and they sought him among their kinfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the, in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at understanding the answers he gave. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us so? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Don't you know I should be about my father's business? Even at that age, 12 years old, he knew he had the business, he had his father's business to attend to. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto, unto him. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature in favor with God and man. Now let's change, turn to Matthew 14, 14. Yeah. 
In Matthew 14, 14, it went, and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. And it was the evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that he may go into the village and buy themselves food. But Jesus said unto them, They did not depart, give you them to eat. And they said unto him, We have but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit on the grass, and he took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples, and his disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat, and were all filled, and they took up the fragments and remained the twelve baskets full. Now did you catch in verse 19 where he said he looked up to heaven and he asked God's blessing? So he said all the time that of himself, he could do nothing. Now turn to John 11, 32, 5, please. In 32, John 11, 32, it says, Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she did, fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if we were here, my, my brother had not died. And Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her. He groaned in spirit and was troubled. And they said, Where have you led him? And said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind and caused it that even this man should not have died? And Jesus, therefore, groaning in himself, coming to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. And Jesus said, Take you away the stone. Martha, the sister of, him, sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four years. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee, if thou would believe, thou should see the glory of God? And they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up to his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, that because of the people which stand by, I said it, that it be believed that thou hast sent me. And when he, when he as thus had spoke, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And the he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was about, bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto him, Loose him and let, it, let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. And you see here again, you see what he says, the Father always hears him. He always goes to the God the Father. Then in Luke, he back now back to Matthew uh, eleven twenty five, please. Matthew 11, 25, it says, At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank you, O Lord, Father God, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them unto bed. Even for, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son. And he to whom as ever the Son will re reveal him. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, and I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest in your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light.
Now let's turn to John 17, 1. The book of John shows you how many times over and over again how the Father and Jesus Christ relied upon each other and how Jesus relied on God the Father immensely. In chapter 17, he says, and these scriptures are read through Passover and have a lot of meaning for the Father and the Son. These words spake Jesus and lift up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, where thy son may also glorify thee. And thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou givest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifest thy name unto men, which thou givest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou givest them me, and they have kept my word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the word which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, and they me one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Though that thou givest me, I have kept it. None of them is lost, but the son of perdition and the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come to thee, and these things I speak to in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even if I'm not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou should keep with them from the evil. They are not of the world, even if I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And thou hast sent me into the world. Even so I have sent them into the world. And for their, their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word that they might also be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. And for they also may be one in us, and the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the, and the glory which thou givest me, I have given them, that may be one, even we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and has loved them, and, that, and thus has loved me. And Father, I will that they also, whom they, thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, while how thou hast given me, for thou lovest me from the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee. And these they have known that thou hast sent me, and have declared unto them thy name. And we will declare it, that the love therewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. All through John, not only this chapter, but all through John, he's about, he speaks about the love of the Father. Now let's pick it up again in Matthew 26, 36. And then coming Jesus with them into a place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples, sit here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter 
and the two sons of Zebedee, and they began to be sorrowful and very heavy. And he said unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as I will. He come into the Sabbath and found them in sleep and said unto them, Peter, why could you have not watched but one hour? Watch and pray that you empty not into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. He went again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found him asleep again. Their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the, the third time, saying the same, same words. Then he came and he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Because behold, the, son of, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Rise and let us be going. Behold, he is that hand that does betray me. Then let's, go, let's pick it up again in Luke 22, verse 39. as he went to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And he was at the place, and he said unto them, Pray that you not empty to temptation. And he was drawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but mine be done. And he appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly as he sweat with a great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and came to his disciples, he found them sleeping again. You know, he must have been a lot of stress because he, he wanted to draw closer to the Father and ask if this cup could seem to be passed. He knew what he was in for. And he could pass him, but he must have been a lot of strength that it, the Bible said in Luke, that's why I wanted to cover the, what he said, it said in Luke, that he, when he prescribed that time, it was like drops of blood. So he must have had intense prayer with God the Father, asking him if this could, if another way this situation could be passed, they could find another way. But he said again, not my will, but thy will be done. This time Jesus knew his time was about to come to a close. But he is still human. He did not want to die. He knew the sacrifice was going to happen to him, but he again said, not my will, but thy will be done. He knew the scriptures of Isaiah, what he must suffer and why he must suffer, yet he opened not his mouth. He suffered the crucifixion. In verse 46, 24, it's, it's, it says, Luke 24, Verse 46. And he cried with a loud voice. He said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. That was the last time he talked to the Father, and he knew that he, he was going to die. He knew that his time had already run out. Well, you know, he suffered the crucifixion, and he said, you go through Isaiah to tell you exactly what's going to happen, and you go down the road and follow the cru crucifixion, what actually happened, how he was nailed to the stake. And then Joseph Armafair went to Pilate and begged that his body would be taken down, that he had give him a decent burial, what he did. And he was, he was put in that tomb, and no, no body had ever been laid before, and if he was sealed. And the scriptures that said, you know, it, it's, it's the things that would happen, it was going to happen. The scribe and the Pharisees wanted a sign that he was God. You see, well, no sign was going to be given unless the one of John in the belly of the will. Three days and three nights. So we know exactly three days and three nights. 
Jesus Christ is res resurrected again, and he sent it up into heaven. And his angels are watching as he went to heaven, said, the same Christ you see going to heaven, one day you're going to see him come back down from heaven. <clears throat> now, when I say my prayers at night, I always ask God the Father to let me come into the very throne room. I like to feel when I'm praying. I like to get close to God the Father and feel, feel what I'm saying. So let's turn to Revelation 4.1. After I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and a voice, phrase voice which I heard was of a thunder, was a, tr a trumpet talking with me, and which said, Come hither, and I will show you things into the future. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And that was, it was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow around the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And around the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders seating, clothed in white raiments. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightning and thunder and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Well, this past sun, sun, Sunday around home, we had a, a thunderstorm came through the, uh, our neighborhood. And uh, Shirley always tell me, Daddy, I don't like this kind of weather when that thunder was going off and the lightning and stuff. Well, in, a, in the fall last year, my neighbor Clyde, right next door, he has two trees. They must be 40, 50 uh, feet tall palm trees. Well, one evening we were sitting there, and I don't remember what day it was, boy, but we heard that thunder and that lightning, boy, wow. And my house is built on a foundation. You could feel it shake. And boy, I went by the back door to look. And sure enough, I got on the porch of the top of that tree that lightning hit the tree on the south side. And you see it was not burning, it was smoking. Well, all the leaves fell off of that tree now. It's, it's dead. It, just, it fell off. And it reminded me, my daughter lives on the next street. And she had the little dog, and they call her Miss Prissy. Well, when I go over there, boy, Miss Prince see me coming, watch she come in, jump, she jump in that boy, and, and I'll scratch it, and I need a belly, and I'll scratch her neck, and, 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 and I'll quit for, for, for a minute or so, and she look up, <laughs> don't quit now, but boy, keep, <laughs> keep on going. So, Nancy says, she don't like it when it's bad weather either. She said, boy, when it's the sun and lightning starts, she come for jump in her lap and try and get under her clothes. And if she's sleeping at night, she's sleeping at the foot of the bed, at the bed, and the lightning ain't gonna strike or something. Boy, she she, and said, she come and she won't get underneath the covers. It's a nice little story, but it, it's a true story. <laughs> And there the throne was, is a sea of glass like crystal. In the midst of the throne, around the throne were four beasts, full of eyes before and behind. So they had eyes completely around. And the first beast was, the first beast was like a lion. Like I said, you know, I like to, when I'm in God's throne room, I like to visualize why he, 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 he put a lion. So why a lion? So not too long ago at uh, Shirley be in the front room watching something, but most of the back at my exercise in my study room, and I'll go to st I'll read the Bible, read, and I'll put, I'll put the television on and put it on mute. And I was looking, I'm not to look up, and they had a documentary on the uh, animal planet about lions. And there was a three or four female lions, I mean, right now, nice, sleeping, walking around, and there was big old Leo the lion, he was laying down while he got the big old head fire dress around, and he had three, three or four little cubs running around, and one of them happened to be bouncing to him, to, to Leo, and what he, he took him in, but he knocked him, he went rolling, didn't hurt him, but he shook him up, and then the lion, he, he, Leo got tired of laying down, as he finally looks around, he, he yawns, 
and he gets up. When he gets up, boy, rawr, he let that, 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 that deadly roar. And I'm not really sure they watch the program sometime. The MGM movies always start with the picture of that line, rawr, at the beginning and the end. Then the next one was of a calf. Well, being, I was raised on, on a, not all my life, but most of my life on a farm, and I was uh, visualizing with a calf, you know, the black angus calf or white uh, heifer, uh, the Hereford uh, cattle. And my brother and I uh, decided to ask my father, he had about 18 acres that really wasn't doing anything. We fenced it in, and we, uh, we had about 24 head of cattle and three uh, milk cows. And it was always when the time for the cow to have calf where we knew and we watched him until well, when the cow would have the, the calf. Uh, most of the time the cow would lay down and have the calf or the, they'd, they'd have the calf. But he had one little contrarian cow she bought. She was, she was always uneasy around humans, but she was always, she had her calf standing up too. But it was amazing how I watched how the cow, when the, the calf was born, how the mother would come back over that calf and lick it and clean it, and cleaning it up. It reminded me when a baby is born in a hospital, where the first thing the, the nurses take that baby, put it on the table, and most, you know, take all the mucus out the feet, make sure the, the tongue and the, the breathing the air is clean, make sure that baby is clean before you present it to the mama. Now, a cow, when she had that calf for the first 21, 25 days, she don't have milk, she has colostrum. Colostrum is just like a milk, but it's real heavy and it's yellow. But in that colostrum must be the vitamin, the mineral where that calf needs to make a jump start. The same thing, sometimes a mother in a hospital, she, her milk won't come right away, so they come with a formula made for the, for the, for the, for the satisfy the baby. And the next one, it comes to the face of a man. I looked and I studied the thing of face of a man, face of a man. and I said, you know, I was in the service, spent two years in the service. It made me think of Dwight Eisenhower, what a wonderful president he was. Then I said, you know, even an actor can become president. Ronald Reagan became president. Then we went to this, I thought, think about the 16th president, Abe Lincoln. Then, of course, George Washington, the father of our country. What all these men had in common? They all believed in the Bible. They believed in the Word of God, and they believed the promises of Abraham, that this United States of America just didn't brought, came together by all. It was brought together by the grace of God. But what we see today, the politicians, we don't have any politicians no more. The, polit the president we have now, he's worried about his agenda. The congressmen don't have worried about that. They don't pass some of the stupidest laws you want to hear. They went down that we have abortion, killing millions of babies. We see things that happen we never had before. We kicked God out of schools. If something really happened, a disaster happened somewhere, people get killed. They was, where, where was God? But God said, they can, they can pray. I won't hear it. They won't be with me, I won't be with them. He, he tells you in Leviticus, he also he tells you in Deuteronomy, if you read it through, what you do, I'll do. But if you don't do, then I won't do. So you can't put the blame on God. Now the next is the, is the, is the, 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 of, the fly, of a flying uh, eagle. Well, of course, in my house, if you come to my house, I got about at least a dozen statues of eagles. I love eagles. And when we went to uh, Alcapulco, uh, Mexico, they had some uh, statues of eagle with standing up, bit of stone, uh, a bone. It was carved out of bone. Then they had another one, boy, I mean, it was beautiful. And it was made out of ironwood. Boy, I'm telling you, it's beautiful. So I, I love eagles. And not too long ago, if, I don't know if you saw it or not, but on NBC and CBS, they had a, uh, in a wildlife refuge, the eagle that was, was, was given, they had two eggs in the nest, and the, the, the mama eagle that was around the, the nest. And the cameras were set up to capture everything that was going on to see these eagles uh, coming out of the shell. And after a while, you saw one of the shells would shake a little bit, and then you saw a crack, the whoop. He flipped open, there he was. But he wasn't too small. But then you can see the first thing he was born with, his boy had his mouth open. He was hungry. So the daddy eagle, he was standing on a fish, and he was breaking the fish off and then dropping it in that little eagle's mouth. 
Then you saw the second one, it was the same thing. Well, these are some things we know when I pray about, I try to cross this to, to draw close to God, to picture not only being in that throne, but feel uh, some of the things that he's telling us about this, about this throne room. And the four beasts, each of them had six wings. Most of the things you look, know, the, 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 the little uh, cherub that looked at did a little angel with little small wings. But he just said he had six wings. And they were full of eyes within, and the rest, the rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, is, and is to come. And those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their throne before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thy, thou hast created all things in thy pleasure, they were all were created. But now, you know, we've talked about the throne, but I have great news for you. This same throne of God is coming down to the earth. It's coming down to this earth. Let's go to Revelation 21, 1 through 7. It says in chapter 21, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth was passed away, and there was no more sea. And I saw John, the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God the Father, prepared as the bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice of heaven saying, <clears throat> Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself will be with them, and he will be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be the most death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. He said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. He said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. And he that overcome it shall be it shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and she, he shall be my son. How wonderful about, but beyond the ability of words to express in the glory of God and his wonderful purpose, actually in progress. Praise and honor and glory be to God and Jesus Christ forever and ever. In Revelation 22, 7, Jesus said he will come quickly. And I say myself, Lord Jesus, come. Brethren, I thank you all for being here with us today. Have a happy Sabbath. Have a great potluck and fellowship. Now in closing, in Hebrews 13, 5 is one of my favorite scriptures. And that scripture always says, Jesus Christ and God the Father will never leave or forsake us. And that's good 24 hours a day. 24-7. You can take that to the bank. This is as good as gold. My last scripture is found in Philippians 4-2. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. God bless.